you said we know you the guerrilla marketer, bro. No, for sure, bro. That's my thing. I'm like, I ain't taking nothing from nobody else, but I guarantee you I'm one of the only humans that y'all probably gonna meet who gonna say like, yeah, I made 30, 40 million and I ain't never used the ad. I ain't never been to no net networking event. I ain't never, and I'm not knocking nobody. I ain't never had to take pictures with 50 niggas to, 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 to further my imagery or exposure. Like, I literally know how to sit in my crib, come up with concepts off the top of my head, take them to these iPhones and make sure this family gonna be in power for a long, long time. I don't need to add. Like, my brain, it be cooking, boy. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Like, I'm gonna give y'all some more game. If you want to get to that level of mastery with being a wordsmith, you need to read. I ain't gonna lie. That's the only thing I can tell you. You need to read. You need to engage in objective conversations. And you need to hang around people that put you on new information and new opinions. Shout out to my motherfucking mama. My mama's a teacher. She ain't play by my read and she ain't play by the way that I articulate. And it's just real convenient that her son grew up to be a motherfucker that made millions off the way that he's able to, um, off the way that he's able to articulate and, and the way that he's able to express himself. Like, look, I give you another one. This one people always say, he be teaching stuff that you can Google. Why we don't live in the same neighborhood, bro? Why your kids don't function like mine? If you can Google this shit, you niggas should have been rich. Y'all should have been paid. If you go Google this shit, like, poverty wouldn't be what it is. You feel me? Like, I, I just thought of that one. But, yeah, yeah, like, people send shit my way all the time. You know, and then I politely, like, I receive it, take that motherfucker back, and shoot. Chuck, bro, make sure you choose the digital option, y'all. Please hit the drop-down arrow. If you're getting a post-recession pack and you're saying it's $249, that's the physical. Get the digital. And everybody got a digital. I got some dope news for y'all. But, look. Brad, you said, I hate, I swear I hate when niggas say that about Google. Yeah, bro, that be they, that be their favorite line, but I've never seen these niggas at the Clearport. I've never seen them boarding, boarding a jet when I was boarding it. I've never seen them niggas at the, uh, at the trust place when we be buying these houses. I've never seen these niggas gun stores. I've never seen these niggas buy their parents no cars, no houses. Um, bro, fuck the money. I've never seen these niggas be able to pour into their children at the level I did and their children be able to pick it up, get it. And go do their thing with it. I've never seen any of this. I'm, I'm, and again, y'all, for my entrepreneurs, hear me again. It's another one. I say this all the time. Consider the source. Y'all, somebody said they recession pack didn't load. Bro, just hit the contact us button and let them know. They'll get you situated. Hey, consider the source. A lot of y'all don't consider the source. So y'all be engaging with people like, listen, y'all, if y'all don't hear nothing I say today, please listen to this. Somebody said, you not the only one doing that. Here we go. I know that silly ass nigga. That's kind of obvious. I'm not the only person with a right foot either. I'm not the only person with a, with a set of balls. It always be a loud, dumb, pointless motherfucker in the comments. And here we go. So, bro, this is what you should do. I'm going to give you some big brother game, little nigga. I'm not the only one doing it, but I'm one of the only niggas that's doing it that are pouring to dummies like you on social media. So rather than be on my dick trying to like come up with a with, with an invalid, pointless ass statement in the middle of a conversation, you probably should listen to the nigga who doing more than you doing. Cause at 1031, I'm not on no other nigga live that and, and talking about what he not doing and he got more than me. Like J. Cole said this shit the best. I can't even remember the line exactly, but the nigga said, if you making fun of a million, that nigga, the joke is on you. Bro, I'm positively sure our quality of living does not align. Because niggas who live like I live, they don't get on other niggas' lives and say dumb shit or pointless shit in the middle of the morning. Niggas gonna pull up. Listen, I couldn't look at a nigga that did more than my daddy. I couldn't look at a nigga that's doing more than my mama. And the only thing I can think of to say, you ain't the only person doing that. No, nah, nigga, I'm finna put my listening ears on like they taught us in third grade. And I'm finna and I'm finna soak up some of this game. I'm finna go to a nigga YouTube. I'ma tell you something, bro. Like niggas in my world and my caliber, we don't be on niggas live saying weird shit. Like we on the stage. We the niggas that everybody looking at. So so little bro, you might wanna like put your listening ears on again, like they gave us in third grade, and soak some of this shit up. Cause I'm like, bro, I ain't taking nothing from you, my nigga, but I'm willing to bet just based off that statement alone. And like how 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 low your frequency is, cause like that's the only thing you took from that whole statement. He ain't the only one doing that. 
We know. I know niggas that's way richer than me. I know niggas that got buildings. I know a lot of shit. Do you, man, do you, when I get right, he produced for Disney and Gatorade. Can you imagine me saying some dumb ass shit in the middle of him giving me a spill? You ain't the only one did that. No, bro. That's why I'm where I'm at, nigga. I ain't got no degrees and certifications. But when I inherit big dogs who willing to give game, I shut the fuck up and I listen. Little nigga, you got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Please realize that, bro. Please understand that. Nigga, you got two ears and one. If, if, if your daddy didn't tell you, your grandpa, moms, or none of that, I'm going to tell you, nigga. You got two ears and one mouth for a reason. When big dogs sit at the table, bro, you got to know to shut the fuck up. Me and Nip have four, we had one conversation on email, and then we had four conversations in person. I've never interrupted that nigga and said no stupid shit like, Nip, you ain't the only one did that. What? The fuck, nigga? You standing in front of a phenom. Your daddy ain't did it. Your mama ain't did it. You ain't did it. Your grandma ain't did it. Your granddaddy ain't did it. Yo, great grandma ain't did nigga. That's four generations of nigga that you come from ain't did it. You started, you standing in front of nigga that did, and he thirty three. And the only thing you could think of is he ain't the only one with some houses, little bro. With love, this where you shut the fuck up, bro. Or if you do open your mouth, say something that's educated so niggas could take you serious. You the type of nigga will make lead a room. You literally will be uninvited, bro. Don't ever bring your little goofy ass cousin in. We up here talking about folk. $40 million, and this nigga talking about you ain't the only one with a Rolex. Boy, your ass ain't got one, period. Get your broke ass out of here. And you, you ain't just financially broke. You're mentally broke. You got niggas talking about $100 million, and the only thing you can think of to say is, you ain't the only one with a house. Clearly, nigga. That's kind of obvious. I'm only 33. Niggas was buying mansions before I was born, so that's kind of that's kind of obvious. But anyway, bro, I hope you have a beautiful Friday and you find some productive shit to do. Other than tell niggas that got more than you what they ain't got. And I say that with love, bro. But I, I really be, I really be, uh, I really be, somebody said, it's so, it's so funny how upset you get. Yeah, see, whoever you are, you wasn't on the live 10 minutes ago. Because I literally just gave y'all the example of how you leverage foolish people and use them to your advantage so yeah bro you you too probably should jump on the live when they start because you missed the whole lesson about leveraging negativity harnessing that energy and using it to your benefit but i'm gonna listen again to my entrepreneurs y'all to yeah dj yeah bro he, he wasn't here he missed that part of the conversation um y'all let me share something with y'all Again, several of y'all wasn't on the live, so please, like, I got it. But anyway, y'all, check this out. There's something else I want y'all to know. The internet is not real. I'm never going to get mad about the internet because it doesn't exist. When you when you cut your phone off, um, uh, when you cut your phone off, this shit is non-existent. You feel me? Like, hold hold on, we're gonna take a field trip. The internet, ain't, the internet not real, okay? So I don't even know how to formulate a personal opinion to that. But like, this is real, bro. This is real. This is real. All this is real. That's real. You see that car out there? That's real. Bro, I was just having this conversation. I don't seek internet validation. Where I live at, I'm the man. You see that art up there with my face on and my children? That's real. Bro, you're, you're never going to see me get upset about the internet because it doesn't exist. Once I power the iPhone off or in the live, y'all are non-existent. And I'm not saying it in a disrespectful way. I'm just being all the way thorough. Like, where I, bro, I just gave a video about this yesterday. See, what's happening with this generation 
is y'all seek more validation for your internet name than your real name. I don't know how to get into that space because in my real world, I really am Mr. Grace. People really do address me as Lord Grace. You feel me? Like, I really like sleep here every day. I really like go pick limes out my tree every morning. Well, when I feel like it and squeeze them into some hot water and drink them to clear my system out. The internet isn't real, bro. Only niggas that get mad about the internet are niggas who believe this shit is real. It's nothing more than an app. You know, like I could look at myself in the mirror. I'm really respected. Like it's 13 homes in this neighborhood. I own four of them. I'm a 33 year old black man and the only black man in this motherfucker. Nigga, that's real. Like when I walk down the street, the respect and the love I get is real. You feel me? So yeah, bro, like you're never going to see me get upset at the internet. Because if I really was genuinely mad, like I would block you realize you still on here. I ain't blocked you, bro. And I'm not going to block you because I be knowing like a lot of you niggas really need this ism. Y'all didn't have dads. Y'all didn't have big bros or the niggas that did have y'all was lame as a bitch and they ain't really take the time. So a lot of y'all really don't know how to conduct yourself as an inner validated man to begin with. I'm going to say it again. Like niggas really be niggas are really go all out for their profile name and not the real name. Like, bro, my real name matter. Y'all really know who the graces is. Like, we we really get resources and love everywhere we go based off the work that daddy put in and them children put in. That's real. Again, y'all, I'm going to tell you, but listen, to my entrepreneurs, here goes another example. Niggas always be like, where the success stories? Um, And I got several. You know, every time I'm on here, I ask people, like, who made money, who died, died, died and people comment. But I'm going to tell you, again, the internet ain't real. Y'all, my, my biggest success story is my children. And I appreciate the love and everybody affirming me that I, I may have changed their life and made them some money, y'all. But y'all grown. My biggest success story is that I got two children, right? And my, I'm just going to count my top two because those are my strongest. Derek is 19 years younger than me. But that man can stand next to me. He can articulate on my level. That boy shoot better than me. It's a lot of things at 14 that my son has eclipsed me in at 33. Derricka can cook better than me. Derricka can nurture her sisters better than me. Nigga, that's where I hang my hat at. So again, when niggas be asking what's my success story, I got I got like I could ask right now. I got a gang of adults who going to be like, I made money with bro. I made this amount. I did this. I changed this. No, nigga, my biggest success story is I created children at 18 and 21. I'm 33 now, and I know some 40-year-olds that can't fuck with them. I know some I know some 25-year-old girls, Derricka will put that arm bar from jujitsu on your ass, because niggas love to say the guns. She'll put that arm bar on your ass. I know some grown-ass niggas that cannot articulate better than my son. I say this with love because I ain't knocking nobody, but I know some people on here right now who like, if I handed my son a marketing campaign and you, you couldn't articulate on his level. You could not, you could not, you could not align with him with an elevator pitch in 30 seconds. The boy going to go. You are double that man age. And again, I'm not knocking nobody. I'm just telling you, this is where I hang my hat on as a success story. You double that man age and he will run circles around you intellectually. You cannot convince a nigga why they should support your business. He can convince a nigga in 30 seconds why they should support and if you think I'm full of shit, go down my timeline. The boy been, but listen, he been showing his ass lately. He's 14 years old. That's my biggest success story. Is that like, not that I did it for a bunch of grown motherfuckers, but the people that I was obligated to do something for, I taught them how to run circles around niggas that's two, three times their age. In 14, I'm sorry, yeah, in 14 and 12 years. Derricka is 12 years old. A lot of y'all don't realize the first time y'all saw her, she was three. That's, that's my success story. Did you see my three-year-old nine years ago? That's a hell of a success story. Did, a lot of niggas don't, you know, niggas don't speak on this one. And I don't care because we, we don't need the credit. Like, we already won. But my children, my black daughter, she pioneered guns for black families all over the world. And it's it's 100,000 niggas right now that would be like, nah, she did it for real. When I seen that video... I was like, hell yeah, I'm finna teach mine. I was like, hell yeah, it's time to get ready. I was like, hell yeah, it's time to arm ourselves. My three-year-old pioneered black gun ownership 
for little black kids all over the fucking world. Nigga, that's a success story. I don't care. I don't give a fuck about no money. We gonna live in niggas' hearts for like two more generations. And if they keep turning up the way they turning up, we gonna extend that bitch for... Yo, when I be telling niggas like, we gonna rule for two, three hundred years, man, I mean that shit from the bottom of my heart. I'm making intentional plays. I, pr- I purposely keep putting Derek in front of y'all. Because Derek gonna step into my shoes before this year over with. And I'm gonna get the fuck out of the way. And he gonna run that shit another 30, 40 years. And then he gonna teach his sons and his daughters and we gonna keep fucking going. But yeah, bro, like, again, y'all, the internet ain't real. The internet ain't real. Somebody said, I ain't heard, thank God yet. You clearly ain't been here long. Y'all, I don't give a fuck about y'all, God. I don't subscribe to your God. Nigga, if you want to hear, thank God, go look in the mirror and repeat that shit to your damn self. Fuck you in your God. Now, now we gonna stand on that one. Y'all got the wrong nigga. You ain't heard, thank God yet. Bitch, go repeat it to yourself. Go, go tell your mammy, thank God. Go tell your bald head ass children, thank God. I ain't heard, whoa. Bro, y'all intrusiveness is crazy. I'm glad I don't be knowing y'all in real life. Nigga, beat the fuck out of one of y'all in real life. I wish you, one of you niggas will walk up to me. I ain't heard thank God yet. You gonna hear thank God once security and me get off your ass. Now, nigga, fuck you in your God. Stand on that. And if you ever seen me in real life, nigga, you gonna walk by. Because your God won't be able to save your ass. You and that nigga get popped. Super disrespectful. Fuck you in your God. How about that? And, nigga, and, and niggas ain't going to do nothing but comment or unfollow. Because you niggas ain't going to do nothing in real life. With love, bitch ass nigga. And I'm not blocking you. Hang out a little bit. I'm going to talk some more shit. And you're going to keep following me. And you're going to tap into my lives for the next year, nigga. Anyway. So, y'all. Let's talk about it. Um, So, the point of today, right? Y'all see the title. It says, Guns and Butter, baby. Hey, y'all. Please, hold on. I, I got to give y'all a disclaimer. Y'all be thinking I'm one of these other niggas y'all follow. I don't care if we not friends. I don't be looking for friends, y'all. I don't do sponsors. I don't have white people backing me with money. I say whatever the fuck I want to say. I say however I'm feeling. I know you niggas don't like that, y'all, but I'm not the... Niggas y'all follow. I don't want to be loved. I get enough love and feel me. I'm not validated on this social shit, nigga. I'ma stand on what I said. My feelings and I'ma stand on them. I'm not these other niggas that want y'all to like me. I'm not these other niggas that want y'all to come to my events. I'm not these other niggas that got white sponsors behind me, so I gotta watch what I say and I can't be militant and I can't say how I really feel. Bitch, I back everything independently. I'm not them, bro. You feel me? So that intrusive shit that y'all be pushing on other niggas or trying to tell them what to do, right plan, wrong fucking man. Y'all got to holler at one of them niggas that want to be on CNN. Y'all got to holler at one of them niggas that want to be acceptance. Y'all got to holler at one of them niggas that like want y'all to like them. I'm not him. It never will be. Nigga, I'm going to stand on these principles to the day I die. And it ain't a nigga on the planet that's going to make me stand, make me not stand on them. Nigga, my mama and my daddy can't make me not stand on my principles. You niggas got to know I ain't doing shit for y'all that I don't want to do. Please don't ever get that fucked up. There is no white, black, green, or gray company that feed my, that feed my narrative. I'm not these other niggas. I don't, I, don't, I don't care if niggas ever ask me for an interview. I turn them shits down every day. I don't care if a nigga don't ever book me. I don't like leaving my big ass houses to go outside anyway. Please, y'all, please, please like get that part because y'all really be wanting me to subscribe to that. Yeah, buddy. Uh, fuck you, nigga. I said fuck you. And I'm standing on that. And that's that. But anyway, y'all. That nigga said he ain't heard me say thank God. <laughs> the fuck? All right, y'all, so look. <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? Y'all, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get on track in a second, y'all, but I got to say one last thing. The intrusiveness and the force that religious people meet non-religious religious people with is just outright disgusting. Like, some of y'all come off rapey. 
No niggas won't say it. I'll say it. You niggas be rapey. Y'all really like be under a nigga bed. Call Jesus. Be in a nigga window. Call Jesus. Be at a nigga door. Call Jesus. Nigga open the mailbox. Call Jesus. Nah. The fuck, bro? Like, stop. That's why y'all ain't getting no pussy. Y'all don't get no women. Y'all don't have no favor in life. Y'all niggas just rushy ass, weird ass niggas that want to force a nigga to believe in what you believe in. Boy, shut the fuck up and mind your business, nigga. If that shit working for you, let it work for your bald head ass. Are you gonna are you gonna make a nigga subscribe to what you subscribe to? That's why I be saying we don't let niggas in our in my neighborhood knock on doors. I've been done beat the brakes off one of y'all ass. Knock on my door, call Jesus. I go. I'm out by my pool. Call Jesus. I'm out in the garden picking the lime. Call Jesus. Y'all better get the fuck on, man. Y'all niggas be weird as shit. So you ain't gonna read. You ain't gonna open that Bible. You ain't gonna believe in the word. You ain't gonna call on God. No motherfucker, stop. Yes, yeah, rushy and rapey, bro. Them niggas be weird. But anyhow, y'all, let's get into it. So, y'all know we but y'all know we about to open up. We about to open up the poster session pack. Been telling y'all all week. Y'all got until Sunday to get it for forty nine ninety nine. Um, to the people that's asking me to get on topic, let me say this: I understand y'all concern, but I also want y'all to understand that I just do what I want to do. So if I said join the live because we finna talk about toenails and shoe boxes and I decide to talk about moose knuckles and, and weave caps, then that's just what I'm on. And y'all have the y'all have the birthright to like hit back or X and get off the live. Like it's it's not like I don't have four hundred plus videos on YouTube. It's not like I don't give out tangible and intangible examples every day. So I totally I totally feel y'all like can we get on topic? But just know, like, if my topic changed mid-sentence, it just changed. And it's my live. And I get to do whatever I want to do on the internet and off the internet. You feel me? So I appreciate y'all having an interest in the information. I genuinely do. But I want you to know again, just like I told that other nigga, I'm not him, y'all. I do what I want. You feel me? So if my mind go left real quick and I want to talk about what's left, then shit, that's what we finna do. And niggas, you know, niggas can log off, cuz. But anyway, y'all, uh, excuse me. I feel you, though, bro. We finna get into it. So, guns and butter. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. I'm reading straight out of the post-recession pack. Let's get it. Um, We're going to talk about some of the key points. So, the, the last curriculum in here is about protecting your castle. Quote, unquote, safe rooms, panic rooms, protecting the crib, X, Y, Z. Um, home defense, right? Let's get into it. A couple things I'm going to share with y'all. If you're taking notes, take them. If you got the pack already, you're good to go. You got access to all this information. Uh, and this last curriculum, this is what we touch on for the most part. Number one, home defense is essential to protect your family and property from intruders or attackers. Put it in your face. What up, bro? Number two, self-defense is crucial to staying safe in any situation. And it is important to have an exit strategy and emergency contact list in the case of an emergency. You feel me? So I'm going to say this again. Uh, self-defense is crucial in staying safe in any situation and it's important to have an exit strategy and emergency contact list in the case of any information, uh, any, any emergency. I want y'all to be honest. How many of y'all children got an emergency contact list? Drop a one. If you don't have one, drop a zero and be honest. If you die right now, if you get incarcerated, if you get hurt, most of y'all children's primary go-to is going to be 911. I don't know if you're paying attention. And I'm not saying all 911 is bad. Shit, I was a 911 dispatcher for four years. Um, what I am saying is this. A lot of times, those outdated and disenfranchised entities that we count on, they don't truly give a fuck if we live or die. They don't truly like... Y'all gonna be all the way real with you. My daddy is retired Secret Service. If one day my daddy called me and was like, Pop, because that's what he called me to this day. Hey, Pop, I'm finna respond to a call. It's a chance I might die. I would gladly tell my daddy, fuck them people and come home. So I, I'm not saying everybody this way, y'all, but I'm telling you, use your fucking noggin. Use your noggin, man. Don't nobody want to die for us, y'all. Nigga, you don't want to die for them. Why the fuck would you have that expectation for the next man? Be real. 
Y'all out here with kids and the whole family, like, hell yeah, but I'm gonna die by my neighbor. I hear I hear a bomb go off over there, I'm diving through the window. No. So a lot of y'all misinterpret like that reliance. Make them niggas your secondary. Make them niggas your third string. But the primary people that you should want to, to care for you and do something about you is the niggas that genuinely love you, y'all. I'm not dying for none of y'all kids. I die by mine, though. It'd be all the way real with you. I ain't dying for none of y'all kids. Now, if it's something I can do long range, I can grab the pistol and hold shit down for them because I, I, I don't think I can stand by and watch a nigga violate a child either. But I'm just telling you, premeditated, man, don't, didn't nobody wake up this morning and put on their uniform like, hell yeah, I can't wait to get that one call that I'm finna go die for. No. No. No the fuck no. So, bro, you got to be your primary, your primary line of defense. And my new thing is, man, is having a plan of action. I keep telling y'all, if y'all is 1053, matter of fact, watch this. I'm finna show y'all some weird ass shit I saw on the internet. Y'all give me two seconds. Y'all, this is why having an emergency contact list and, and, and having a fucking plan of action is dangerously important these days. Check this out. Let me flip the camera. Woman holds Uber driver, Uber East driver at gunpoint after he tried to sneak into her house. My fucking door. Bye. You don't, you do not touch nobody's fucking door. Bye. You just tried to open my door. You an Uber driver delivering food. No, you tried to open my motherfucking door. I should have got the shoot through the door on your motherfucking ass. Yes. No, I'm on my fucking door. Bye. You don't, you do not touch. Now be real. How many of y'all are hardworking parents, busy parents, and sometimes them babies got to use delivery apps. That's why emergency contact list is important. That's why a plan of action is important. That's why it's important for you to go through your fucking house right now today. Like, y'all, when, when you open up the pack, you'll see all these steps. But that's why it's important for you to go through your house today and have a genuine conversation with your children about it. Extra strategy, what doors, what windows, and where do they retreat if shit get real? Because imagine your 12-year-old order him a motherfucking burger and a weird ass nigga like that open the door and he ain't got y'all don't know if y'all peeped that nigga didn't have no food that lady said that nigga took two hours to get there showed up with no food and attempted to open her fucking door and the only reason he stood down is because he she was strapped some of y'all kids don't know how to use a firearm they don't know how to use a knife they don't know how to fight they don't even know how to properly like freeze their mind so they can think with a clear head to make sure they survive this situation. This is our reality. That nigga tried to open a grown ass woman's door. What the fuck you think he'll do to a 12 year old that he know is home alone? This why you gotta have an extra strategy. This is why an emergency contact list, list is important. Because most children in that case, I'm calling 911. Y'all like, I don't know if y'all paying attention, but more times than not, them motherfuckers don't, they, they, they don't take our emergency serious anyway. Y'all like, 911 so tricky, right? You'll fuck around, you're going to get the help you need. You're going to fuck around and get, they're going to shoot your ass when they show up. Or you will fuck around and them niggas will deprioritize your call and a nigga done came in your house and did something to your daughter. Did something to your son. So again, that's why I be, hey, this be niggas favorite line. You're fear mongering. No, I'm just putting shit in y'all face because y'all niggas play oblivious. Y'all niggas really be outside like it's safe outside. Y'all niggas really be traveling and moving around with no gun like you don't live in a, a country that's overridden with guns. You niggas really be jumping in the cars, driving, living in a police state, but don't know how to articulate with the police for shit. I ask this question all the time, and y'all be honest. Drop a one if you ever self-incriminated yourself. How many of y'all been pulled over and literally gave them niggas permission to search knowing you had some shit in there? This shit happens every day. It's people on here. Every time I ask that, I get at least like 10, 15 ones. Niggas be, can, can we come inside? Why not, officer? Come on in. Next thing you know, your ass locked up. Them motherfuckers done lied to you, done went in your bedroom. Sm oh, we smell marijuana, sir. We got probable cause. Put your motherfucking hands behind your... Damn, officer, I called y'all niggas because the neighbor was on bullshit. I don't, I'm going to jail? Yeah, you going to jail, nigga. Now you on bullshit. This shit happens every day. So, like, we got a section in here about law enforcement encounters, too. And again, y'all, if you look like me, which a lot of y'all do, man, this shit bigger than just adults. You got to tell your children and shit. Y'all, I'm a 
Keep giving this example. I'm going to keep giving it. Drop a one if you a daddy. All my daddies on here, drop a one. Y'all, we be, listen, and I know some of y'all going to be like, okay, I remember that example. This from two days ago. This is how real it is outside. Drop a one if you a daddy. All right, all my dads, all my big brothers out there. You come home today. Two little niggas in the room fucking on your sister or your daughter. How do you respond? What are you going to do? Shit, mamas. You come home today. Two little niggas in there fucking on your daughter. How do you respond? How are you going to feel? What are you going to do? This is how tricky life is right now. Tone Bully says, shoot. I'm going to beat him. Tie him. <laughs> Bro said he's going to tie him up. All right, y'all. This, this is our reality, though, right? To all the daddies out there that's like, bitch, I'm finna shoot. I'm finna turn up. This your reality, bro. Them little niggas will shoot you back. Them little niggas got guns bigger than these grown niggas. So I hear you and I feel you. But are you understanding that we're living in the era where these young niggas will pop your ass too? And if you think it's a game, go Google it. Several daddies have been killed in the last two to three years because they came in there with that energy, but we not dealing with the same young niggas. Listen, y'all, them young niggas ain't like us. We was young niggas that had a little respect. We was young niggas that was like, damn, you right, sir, we tripping. Nah, this shit different. Nigga, shoot your ass back. Nigga fucking kill you, the mama, and the daughter. Nigga, that's the real... That is our reality. So when I'm telling you, like, real conversations got to be had with y'all children, not just you. Nigga, it's a war going outside for everybody. So look, this how dangerous it is, right? And, and somebody just said breaking and entering. Bro, your ass will go straight to prison, bro. You gonna have a hard time telling them you killed that 14 year old for breaking and entering and your daughter gave him consent to be in the house. You just killed a child and you gonna do a hundred years. Your daughter ain't got that nigga she used to like and now she ain't got a dad. Bro, I feel you, but you gonna have a hard time, hard time making that point in court, breaking and entering when they literally gonna look at both of their phones and sis definitely gave him consent to come up in that house. Another thing too, again, like, so if y'all not paying attention, as a man, you got to tighten up, bro. As a mom, you got to tighten up. As a young child, you got to tighten up. Just look. Look at the discrepancies in the opinion. A young nigga going to shoot because logically they don't think like us older niggas. They going to be like, bro, that's a grown ass man. Shit, I'm finna up my pistol. I don't know what to do. I can't fight him. And you looking at these two little motherfuckers in here with my daughter. Nah, bro, shit get tricky. So that's why I say, like, remember I said this shit the other day? Teaching our sons and our daughters how to articulate themselves. Teaching our sons and daughters how to negotiate. Nobody dies. But because a lot of us are emotionally moved and we don't know how to pause our emotions to remain in our logic, you gonna trick yourself all the streets or this young nigga gonna shoot you because he terrified for his life because you a grown-ass man and you extremely angry. What would I do if that happened to me? Bro, I'm going to articulate. I'm, I'm not killing no kids, bro, because my children are curious. Bro, I ain't going to lie. A lot of questions y'all would ask me in that arena, y'all wouldn't like my answers. Niggas be the... And I, when I say niggas, I don't mean black people. I mean ignorant, ignorant motherfuckers. And this with love. Ignorant motherfuckers be the only people that have children and don't have the expectation that your kids may do some of the same shit that you did. That is fucking absurd, bro. We were savages, nigga. We was getting pussy, bro. We was wilding out as kids. So I I need you to have the same grace and patience and understanding that you wanted a nigga to have with you when you was in your teen era on dumb shit. Bro, I'm going to articulate. I'm definitely going to ask my daughter, like, bro, what you, you wilding, bro? First, I'm like, how this little nigga got past security? And I'm probably going to laugh and be like, oh, y'all little niggas getting swift. Y'all done got past security in the cameras? Bro, I'm going to articulate. Bro, I was a savage. So for me not to have the same grace and patience with my children and knowing that times are even more crazy and turned up 
that these children are more hypersexual than we was earlier, bro, that's ignorance at its finest. I wasn't shit, daughter, but I want you to be everything I wasn't, even though I had a good mama and good dad. No, they're going to buck you the same way we buck. They're going to lie the same way we lie. They're going to sneak the same way we sneak. Unless, again, articulation, what I said the other day, creating a safe environment for your children. Y'all, I'm going to give y'all some game, and you should really do this shit. Me and my, matter of fact, I don't even want to tell y'all what it is. I'll let them come tell y'all. This is this is real fucking spill. And I urge anybody, do this shit with your family. Watch how far you get. Watch, watch the level of security. Watch the level of safety. Y'all, I keep saying, I ain't good at a lot of shit. But the shit that I'm good at, that I teach on, and I tell y'all to invest in, oh, I'm damn good. I'm really fucking good. They coming out. Check this out. I'm going to let them come in here, and I'm going to ask them a question, and they're going to answer for you. And then I'm going to give you my point that I really feel like everybody with a child should do this. What is this that? It's just on the back. I can show you. Oh, what should I ask you? So, look. It's a game that we play as a family. And that game has strengthened our trust and our bond. What's the name of that game? Derrica, what's the name of the game we play where we keep it all the way real with one another? And we talk court. about... Yeah, court. Huh? Court. Holding court, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and what we do during that game? Just tell them, tell things that's been happening. Yeah, us. pretty much. That's I can't hear you. We kind of get caught up on everything. Right. So we we speak our honest truths, right? We we create an environment where we could just be as weird and crazy and fucked up as we want to be, and we speak our truth to one another, right? Yeah. And and does that help y'all? Yes. Yeah. What does it do for y'all? Uh, it gives me a sense of like comfortability with you telling yeah, telling I feel, like I feel like I have somebody to confide in with certain things. Got you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. That was it. I'll call y'all back when I get off live. So, y'all, I want to bring them in here and, tell, and let them tell y'all yourselves. So, in my household, we hold, we got a game called Hole in Court, where we create a space and an environment where everybody can be extremely honest. Nobody, nobody get judged. Nobody get in trouble. Man, listen, y'all. From drugs to stealing to fucking to breaking in houses, nigga, I done heard it all. I fucking heard it all. And I continue to hear it all because I create an environment where it's like, bro, be you. Man, we ain't doing no judging. Nigga, I ain't doing no tripping. And I keep it all the way real with mine to the point that, like, I tell them shit that y'all will never know. The world will never know. My baby mamas will never know. But I create that environment by being vulnerable myself. So, bro, to answer your question, number one, I would articulate. But number two, bro, I probably won't ever be in that situation because... I've created a space and a system where niggas just going to keep it real and be like, hey, I'm trying to get some pussy. You think I could blah, blah, blah? All right. You hear hear me good when I'm telling you, like, if you got a son who is sexually active, because a lot of y'all do. I ain't going to lie. The sad part is a lot of y'all do and you have no fucking idea. But if you do have an idea, if you have a son who is sexually active or a daughter, I urge you to have a conversation with them because it takes one time for you fucking on a little girl and her big brother come home who don't think logically, who doesn't know how to articulate. That nigga might kill your son. It take one time for your daughter to go to a nigga house that got bad intent and got four homeboys in another room and they feeding her drinks. And ladies, I ain't telling none of y'all to drop a one, but it's not happening to some of y'all. I know it's not happening. I know old lame ass nigga tricked you into coming over with bad intent, got you drunk, got you high and you wake up and these niggas done mishandled you and you got to live for with that trauma for the rest of your days. You got to live with that memory for the rest of your days. You got to fucking live with it's six niggas out here who did something to you that you wasn't even fully functional or aware of. Y'all, I'm I, not to say it can happen to any of us as parents, but the likelihood is extremely low, bro, because I don't I articulate with my children. I create a safe environment with my children. I teach my children the importance of situational awareness. I really tell my children, like, kill that nigga if you got to. I'll come get you. No worries. Center mass. Send that nigga to his maker. We'll figure out what's next. But these conversations have to be had. I'm going to say it again for real. Like, it's some ladies y'all on here. M- motherfucker done did you something terrible that you that's still affecting you to this day. 
because you willing it. La, 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 I'm going to go over to Roy's house. They're having a party. Roy hand you a fucking drink and your life ain't the same no more after that. Y'all, articulate with your children. Create a safe space for honesty. Create a safe space for vulnerability. Let me keep going on. Number three, safe room and panic rooms are an effective way to protect your family during a home invasion. And non-lethal self-defense techniques can be used to deter attackers. So, y'all, I know some of y'all children. J Jay Boxley, appreciate you, bro. Again, y'all, hey, y'all have like a day and a half left to get that pack at $49.99. I'm just being real with y'all. It's going to be $149.99. Excuse me, y'all, after Sunday. So, look. Y'all, a lot of y'all children aren't ready for guns. That's okay. Then I need you to go invest in non-lethal self-defense things. So I'll show you one I got. Everybody think, oh man, I gotta get the guns, man. I need the guns. Damn, y'all, I don't know where it's at. One of my kids done came here and fucked with it. But anyway, y'all, it's called a monkey ball. When y'all get off of here, hey, go look up a monkey ball and go look up a sparter. The Sparta is like, it's almost like brass knuckles, but it's not. It's a piece of plastic that's extremely sharp on the edges. Your children can lock that motherfucker around their hands. And if they hit somebody with that shit, promise you, he gonna know he got hit. The monkey ball is a piece of steel that's wrapped in like this fly wire. You literally can, your child can like literally walk around with it on their wrist. Cause it, it doesn't look like a weapon. But if you tap a bitch with that monkey ball, anybody know what a monkey ball is, you know. You tap a motherfucker with that monkey ball, he gonna know you just hit him in his head with a piece of fucking steel. So everybody, like, I ain't telling you, like, go get the bazooka for the baby today. I'm telling you, like, teach your children the importance of non-lethal non self-defense tactics. They don't always gotta go for the kill, but they may need to knock a nigga out. They may need to gouge a nigga eye out his whole face because he got bad intent for your daughter or your son. Man, listen, if your child leave from point A to B to get on that bus... Giovanni, yeah, bro. Monkey ball and a Sparta. Monkey ball and a Sparta, bro. It'll get a nigga up off you, I promise you. I ain't never did the Sparta. I done touched myself with it. But I done hit myself with that monkey ball. You gonna know you got hit for sure. Uh, again, y'all, situational awareness. Staying safe. No, situational awareness is essential to staying safe and is important to teach children and elderly family members. Hey, who saw that video I posted last night? If you didn't see it, fuck it. I'll show you right now. I keep saying, y'all, it's a war going on outside that nobody's safe from. Check this out. 80 years old, bro. You motherfuckers got two guns pointed at a 80-year-old. You niggas needed two, like... Let's keep it real. At that age, bro, you can cause them cardiac arrest. With the element of surprise and putting a fucking gun in their face. Fuck shooting them. Fuck hitting them. Fuck hurting them. But this this is where we at. There's no pics, y'all. You're like, I'm 33. You feel me? Like, where the era I was born in, niggas definitely was like, bro, you don't bother old people, women, and children. That's not the case anymore. So we even talk about that in here. Situational awareness for children and elderly family members. Some of y'all got elderly people, y'all. Y'all, we even talk about self-defense for special needs children. Because, like, I have a special needs daughter. She's nonverbal. So, y'all, like, this shit is extremely important. Yeah, hey, hey, Wooly Digital, I'm telling you, bro. That's Sparta. Bro, that shit's scary. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I done poked myself with a couple times. That bitch definitely gonna break skin. And the nigga gonna know that you just stuck him with something that he did not want to get stuck with. But, y'all, listen. That shit is important. Self-defense for the elderly. Self-defense for them children and babies. All that. Because niggas don't have no pics no more. They have no morals. They have no standards. A nigga will like torture your 75 year old grandma for 200 fucking dollars. That's how lost and just a bum ass mentality that these niggas is running around with. And number five, room clearing. is It is an important skill to have in case of a home invasion. It is important to have a self-defense plan in place. Listen, y'all. Y'all know how to clear y'all homes? A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know how to clear. Y'all. A lot of y'all be checking in the Airbnbs and just open the door, go sit your bags down and rest on the couch. With y'all, we come in Airbnbs like the men in black. It be six niggas with guns. I don't, I don't man, listen, I wish the children was back in here because they'll tell you, I don't let my children go in hotel rooms or Airbnbs. They have to wait outside in the car because nigga, I'm pulling up with big guns and we gonna clear this bitch like law enforcement before any of my family come in here. 
I know a lot of y'all don't think a nigga won't wait under the bed for you. I know a lot of y'all don't think like your neighbor doesn't look at your daughter walk to school every day. But he do. I know a lot of y'all don't think your, P, your daughter PE coach won't fuck her. But he will. I know a lot of y'all don't want to hear that nigga, but that's our reality. I just showed y'all the other day. 2022, over 350 K-12 instructors went to jail for sex crimes. And a lot of them was fucking women. Did y'all see that post I put up the other day with all them women? And I want to say this too, because black people love to be, oh, that ain't us. Well, we don't do shit like that. It's several, several black women fucking on these kids. Y'all seen the one lady fucked her daughter boyfriend over 300 times. She 45 and he's 16. So I know you think that nigga that wave at the kids every day is friendly. He's too friendly. That nigga eyeing your daughter. It's important that she understands situational awareness. It's important that you say, babe, when you get your ass off that bus, put that fucking phone up and pay attention to your surroundings. It's him. I know a lot of y'all don't want to go this far, man. It's important that when people come in your daughter proximity, she need to know. Let me pull my scrunchie out and put my hair up. I need my hair on my face. I know a lot of y'all don't think on that level. y'all. I, I go deep with this shit. We could really go deep. It is important that when you're in when you're in public settings and you got the opportunity to look at your reflection or a mirror, watch it. Watch your surroundings. Know the different levels of situational awareness. White level, red level, orange level, yellow level. Y'all, I'm a grown man. I do that shit, man. Anytime I can catch a mirror and I'm moving and grooving, I'm in that bitch. Who the fuck behind me? Who the fuck around me? How long this nigga been next to me? And if a nigga been next to me too long, I'm addressing shit, y'all. Like, I'll tell you something about me. I ain't one of them niggas who you gonna be close to me too long and we not gonna address it. I'm gonna turn around and be like, bro, you good? You straight? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm good, bro. I was just going in the same direction. Oh, okay, I was just making show. I don't, and, I, and I leave it at that, but in my mind, I'm just like, I'm making show, bro. I, you know, I know if you need your shit blown off today because you too close in my proximity and you and you walking in the same direction. Nigga, just making sure you want some positive shit because if it is that, I'm getting off before you get off. Again, y'all, I can go deep with that, but I'm going to keep it there. Um, Where was I at? Kids' self-defense and preventative maintenance are important to protect children physically. And there are ways for both girls and for, for both girls and boys to protect themselves. We on live, y'all, so some of this shit I'm just not gonna share. But like y'all really should. There are some very tactful and tasteful ways that y'all children can carry things on them to make sure to ensure that they make it home alive. Y'all really should look into that. Y'all really should teach y'all daughters like how to slice somebody up. I know it sounds terrible, and I know I know. Y'all, I think this is the biggest issue. This is the biggest. Somebody said we should have a summer camp for kids. We don't have a summer camp, but we're having a retreat at my house in Georgia. Y'all might want to pull up. Y'all, y'all, the, the tickets been available since Sunday. People are already buying tickets, and we only got 50 tickets because I ain't letting but so many people come to the crib. But y'all might want to pull up. My daughter's going to be there. My son's going to be there. My pops are going to be there. My, excuse me, my security. Security company gonna be there. My, my team gonna be there. You just how to, how to buck fifty a nigga. You gotta teach your daughter like where a human's cartilage is. She has to know like there are certain things you could do with a human's ear that'll make them scream. There are certain ways that you can touch a human's nose that'll make them get the fuck up off you. There's a pressure point on on the um on the back of any human arm. If you squeeze, oh, you squeeze it. 